Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of Through an Opaque Lens with me Niall Murphy and here I am coming at you from this nice bit of rolling moorland here on our Dartmoor southern perimeter somewhere and I think there might be uh, horses and sheep around, Dartmoor ponies and sheep around and I'm just uh, walking through paths that have been made in the ferns, it's actually quite nice like this you know. Um, right. So, I am coming at you, let me just check actually, I should have checked the date so I can tell you um, when I'm recording, Saturday the 18th of July, actually I intend to put this one out today, that's right. Um, so, what I'd like to talk about today everyone, um, really just um, all I want to talk about is um, the creative surges that I've had um, and really that's what I really want to talk about is creativity in general. Now this week's been a bit of an interesting week for me. Monday, just gone, I sold a synthesizer. Now I mentioned this um, in my Avebury cast, you might remember. Now um, I'll show you a picture of this. This synthesizer is a Sequential Circuits Pro 1. It was made in 1981. I bought one a few years back, quite a few years back actually. Um, it had been used by Vince Clark of Yazoo um, and Erasure fame and Depeche Mode fame, you know the man, everyone should know who Vince Clark is, he's a proper synth aficionado from the 1980s and um, he was, let me see how did he do it, he was in Depeche Mode for about a year left, formed Yazoo with Alison Moyer and then uh, sort of uh, after that happened he formed Erasure in the later part of the 80s with the camp Andy Bell but um, despite his rather poppy taste in sounds. He is a proper synth aficionado. And it was this keyboard um, which uh, he made kind of, uh, was made canon I suppose in British musical history because it was a sound that he used in Only You and Don't Go when he was in Yazoo. But from a more um, spacey and less commercial end of the spectrum, it was also uh, used by the Osric Tentacles. Um, it's got great bubble sounds you know but it's also got great sorts of sequences that once you put them through uh, delays you can get nice arpeggiations and stuff like that you program into it so it's really good so yeah I sold it why did I sell it well because um, one it appreciated in value and um, secondly um, Behringer um, have made a desktop tabletop or s small euro rack clone of the original and it's close enough to the original with analog circuitry. There's a few minor differences, um, but I decided that the pros outweighed the cons. You see, the new version I could get for quarter the price I could sell the old Pro One for. You see, and I'd already bought the um, I'd already bought a pair of Behringer, so I had two of them. And I decided after buying it that I liked it and it was good enough for me, because it kind of means I don't have to be burdened with big cumbersome things that I only need when really ideally I'd like to downsize my possessions I'd like to get my possessions so they're quite small so that I'm free to be nomadic if my life goes in that direction at least that's the plan anyway right so with the money that I uh, that I sold uh, that I made shall I say from selling the original sequential circuits pro one I bought another couple of clones I've now got three analog mono synths which are um, clones of three old classics, including the Pro One. Um, I've got, a, was it? I bought a Behringer K2, which is a, a clone of the Cork MS20, and I've also got a Behringer Model D, which is a clone of um, one of the models of Mini Mook. So I've got the means to be able to produce authentic analog synthesis and create some really interesting sounds now. So it gives me a chance to do somewhat of a creative splurge, so to speak. And that has taken my mind off how depressing this fucking stupid human Muppet world is. And sometimes, I know that by having a YouTube channel, right, it could be very easy for me to get in the habit of just chasing the news and talking about clown world and talking about how stupid the woke are all the time and talking about conspiracies and totalitarianism and, and everything that's wrong. But sometimes, right, I like to focus on what's right and what's good. And sometimes I'm thinking to myself, as I have found out over the last week, is a little bit of, um, a little bit of taking time out from the bullshit and getting back into something that's creative has kind of made me feel like my soul has been somewhat cleansed. And that has been um, something that I, it's like, I missed and didn't realise how good it was to feel that way for a long time because it had been so long, right? That's what I mean, right? Now, 
Um, what I was going to uh, tell you about is I want to promote someone, and that is um, Cheryl Smale, her name is. She's a singer, and um, she's a, well, I can only really describe her as a renaissance woman. She's got the hang of filming, film editing, she's got the hang of sound engineering to some degree as well, and so um, not only can she sing, but she can record and send files, and between us, we've done a collaboration. I had a version that I'd done, a cover of my own, of Teardrop, and it actually featured this sequential circuits Pro One sound on it. It's got this kind of right. So if you follow the link in the in the um, show notes down there to um, Cheryl's video that she done, it's a collaboration we done. We done. Uh, she sung, and um, I mixed it, sent it back to her, and she decided to put the video together. So here we are. That link that you'll get down below. Just look for the link saying um, Cheryl. Uh, was it Cheryl Smale? Teardrop. Check that. It's her doing the singing, me doing the music, and old mate of mine, Adrian, who I used to um, know, who's a drummer, who played um, Hi Hat on it. So, uh, yeah, I recorded this myself when I lived in Totnes, it was a few years back. But um, getting, the, getting the right singer on it um, was something that didn't quite work out so well, unfortunately. However, I'm not complaining now. It worked out in the end, right? So this has actually uh, made me feel like the, the, the creative spirit in me has been, uh, has been reawakened. And with the help of, um, I'm going to have to show you a picture, this rack of small tabletop analog synthesizers that you see here is now making me think, yeah, this is what I want to do. I want to spend a little bit more time playing with these toys. This is something I've wanted to have for a long time now, right? And um, this is kind of ideal. I've got a, a studio of things they're small enough to be mobile. I could actually just put them in a flight case, couldn't I? You know, I could take a suitcase and a flight case. I could go travelling with all this. All right, it might be a bit more expensive than it would be um, to travel lightly, but nevertheless, some people do take more stuff with them. When the lurgies died down, and of course, travelling is freer than it is now again, I want to be able to take my entire studio with me, and I want to be able, man, I really want to be able to do this uh, and the good thing about the technology that we have these days is how it's made everything small enough but at the same time it's made everything analog enough too you know because kind of we realized that when it came to uh, when it came to digital and analog despite the fact that they were desperate to make us use everything digitally you know which has actually come in handy when it comes to recording you know because well a, a computer a laptop and a small audio interface with a few inputs is much easier to cart around than a huge reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder that's for sure right <laughs> it's that but when it comes to actual musical instruments um, it doesn't really make much difference whether it's analog or digital when it comes to synthesizers so you know so I'm really rather happy about that so yes this is kind of um, woken up the creative side of my nature and as I was thinking as as that has awakened some kind of creative side of my nature I want to um, combine that with the entrepreneurial side of my nature I thought well look if I'm doing YouTube videos I'm in a position then to produce memes and I've got like I say I've got um, somewhat of a aptitude for satire so I might as well produce satirical memes that are, how can I say, subtle and not quite controversial enough yet uh, to trigger the anti-woke radar when it comes to, because, uh, you know, you just know, no, no, with these businesses, do you? That's the trouble. You could design T-shirts, right? Which is what I plan to do. Put a lot of slogans on them, but make sure they're, they're on that teetering on the edge of being not quite controversial enough and being too controversial. You know, and I wish to put memes on t-shirts and so one of my plans I was trying to work out how I was going to go about this and it was when I was watching a video by yes that one of the well one of the most famous wrong thinkers of all Carl Benjamin right who you may have heard of right I was watching one of his videos and then I saw that he's got a US and a UK link to um to a t-shirt shop because he's selling in t-shirts with his own memes on them with his own slogans and I thought well um you know he's just doing like slogans but I'm actually designing the art as well as I'm um, coming up with some interesting slogans myself so one of my plans of course is um, to use this same um, this self same shop a UK and a US website and then I can do the American market and I can do the British and the European market too and I want to come up with a whole line of them now I've um, you know some people have suggested things that I've um, 
that I've said or, or, or thumbnails that I've done on my videos and people have said, yeah, that would look good on a t-shirt, I'd buy that. So this is what I plan to do. I've got about two or three in mind. And if you, the discerning viewer, um, have any ideas of any anything that I've done, any thumbnails that I've done or any, um, any images that I've done, any ideas I've done, any phrases that I've said that, that have stuck in your mind, just um, comment in the show notes and let me know um, what you think would be good t-shirts to come out of um, come out of Niles meme factory so to speak and the good thing about making t-shirts these days is that you know there's these you you design the you design a logo right and uh, there's already a manufacturing base and they basically give you a cut for your art so um, they, they they run the whole business I don't have to have myself a t-shirt making factory and this is really cool um, it basically means that this could become the means of be, me being able to be a digital nomad with an income. And to be honest, over the course of the next year, I do need to find ways of making uh, an income, you know, because things could look difficult. I don't know. It's 50-50 at the moment. My future is really very not very certain, and I've said this before. There's one version of me in the future who's living in the penthouse suite of various Hiltons across the world, and there's another version of me who's living um, on the park bench selling the big issue. And I want to make sure that the future me is not the one selling the big issue. So I thought, well, how can I do this honestly and what would be a good way of doing it? So yeah, I am thinking, as I say, everyone, of uh, creating um, T-shirts and then putting links and then uh, setting up a store. And then with, with memes on them, and I come up with loads, I've got, I've got quite a few, but I could come up with a whole line of them, man. Give me enough time. I could come up with loads and loads and loads and loads of t-shirts that um you know with different phrases uh, or different memes or different images or different catchphrases that sort of thing so this is what i plan to do right so anyway um that's basically the size of it today for all you um paranoid conspiracists out there or for all you woke bashers out there i'm sorry if i disappointed you there right? but you know sometimes i like to switch that off that's the thing right so I'm gonna go for a walk and you know what I think I'm gonna uh, probably do a back-to-back -back video on the way home um, because uh, when I go for a walk that way and then that way well similar landscape but it does change a bit so yeah see you later alligator see you soon baboon if you like this content don't forget to like subscribe and share also join the Facebook group follow us on Twitter and now also on parlor and subscribe on BitChute. It's early days for us yet, so please help this channel grow, and it will be gratefully appreciated if you do.